How the juniors ended up with an extra person, I do not know. Alright. Uh, it is a little hot. Cordell jacket. As ASB advisor, Cordell's uh, done a good job being on the ASB. Thank you, sir. You made me see this. Uh, seniors, it's nice to see you guys. It's been a week. It's felt like a little bit longer. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my wife and I gave birth uh, to our... Okay. I always say that. My wife gave birth to our baby boy. I courageously and victoriously held her hand the whole time. Thank you. I need enough pots for clapping in there in my notes, so I appreciate that. Uh, you know, over the last nine months, um, I've been asking people, is it the same? Because we do have a two-year-old girl, too, and I said, is it the same changing boys' diapers and girls' diapers? Because I wanted to know, is it harder, easier, what's the deal? Everyone said, oh, it's the same, you'll do fine. No, it's not fine. <laughs> it's harder. Especially in the first few days, you know, the, the mother's resting, so it's up to the father to step up to the plate and change all the diapers in the hospital, so when it's time to step up, there's that nurse button on the wall that you slap. <laughs> and then all the nurses come storming in, and hey, the way I see it, they love babies, so I was doing them a favor by allowing them to change my son's diaper. <laughs> you know, uh, what's funny is the nurse literally told me, she said, <laughs> honestly, she said, when, he, when his son changed boy, it's important to know that when you take off the diaper, you close your mouth. <laughs> Sorry. She related it to like one of those jack-in-the-boxes where you crank the lever and then the clown jumps out and scares you. And, and when the boy decides to go, you gotta run. Or at least that's what I did. So then we found out about the, uh, I'll leave it with this, we found out about the, the PPTP. Yeah, just when you think everything's been invented, it is a small tent that you put over the boy, and it is genius. The BBTP. Alright, let's probably get started. Uh, seniors, I know you guys just want to throw those caps in the air, so I'm going to keep this short. I'm honored to be here for you guys and to have selected me as your class speaker. I have three simple points, and while I know some of you have heard these stories I'm about to share in class, I think they're valuable enough that hopefully they resonate with you a little more. Point number one can basically be summed up as for the past 13 years we've only told you half the story. You see, we, and by we I mean the education system, has pushed education, education, and more education. Remember this fact this math formula, or what happens when you mix these elements. And while that's an integral part of your success, I'm here to tell you that in my opinion, life's opportunities boil down to 50% what you know and 50% who you know. I don't want to downplay the great accomplishment that has got you sitting where you're at right now. However, since I'm concerned about your future after high school, I would be lying to you if I told you you're going to get every job you apply for and it's smooth sailing from here. This is not to say that you haven't been cultivating your relationships already, but I want to encourage you to continue this paradigm of how you run your life. You see, in a recent study done at McCall School of Business in Charlotte, a staggering statistic was revealed that an estimated 60 to 80 percent of jobs are found through personal relationships. Notice I didn't say half, but 60 to 80 percent. The other side of the coin is you never know when this model of living will reach maturation. Sometimes who will be sitting across the table from you during the interview may surprise you. My senior year in high school, I applied for a job at Olive Garden in Salem. And at the time, I didn't know, but it was just me and the, the restaurant manager. And I didn't know that her son also went to Sheridan High School. And while we weren't technically friends outside of high school, we were always acquaintances and we were always nice and cordial with each other. 
And after the interview, she literally said to me, she said, Brett, you don't have the necessary experience required to be a server. We looked for two years, and you only have one. But she, she goes, to be honest, between you and I as a mother, she goes, I've appreciated how nice you've been to my son. And you guys have always been, been close and friends. And she goes, for that, I'm willing to take a risk on you. You hear that a person reaps what they sow, which usually has a negative connotation. But I'm here to tell you that if you sow yourself and your time in positive relationships, you will reap great things. For my second point, I would like you to reflect on the following statement. Let your heart guide your decisions, and not your decisions guide your heart. I'd like to read that again. Let your heart guide your decisions, and not your decisions guide your heart. I want to tell you a story about a brother and sister that grew up here in the valley and what came of their upbringing. You see, the brother went to Sheridan and chased the American dream. Academically, he graduated respectable 3-5, went on to college, got a degree, married, bought a house, and instead of a white pig fence, just substituted a really old, rickety brown one. But it was a fence nonetheless. Traveling was a big part of the brother's life, and he believed if he worked diligently that one day he might be able to see the world. The sister had a different vision for her life. While Big Brother thought she would follow in his footsteps, to his surprise, she passed on attending college, even though she had similar grades in high school. The brother was confused because she was liked by her peers. He watched her become prom queen. Her teachers pushed for her to go to college. And instead of following the path that everyone else thought was best for her, she instead made a choice to follow her heart. For her, the philosophy her brother held was reversed. She instead would begin her world journey right out of high school. As you know by now, this is a story about my sister and I. I told you this story for one very specific reason. I feel like in our society that if you choose not to go to college, then there is a stigma hanging over your head. It was hard for me to accept my sister's decisions because I had my own interpretations and expectations of how her life should play out. Instead, little did I know that I would become envious of her experiences. Still in her 20s, my sister has managed to travel and or live in Holland, Mexico, Costa Rica, Bali, Indonesia, and multiple states including Alaska and Hawaii. One of my favorites is when she got hired through a Hawaiian cruise line. And while the ship was being built in Germany, only the crew got to sail from Germany to Central America where they went through the Panama Canal and then picked up passengers in California. To sum up this point, I would like to say, whatever decision you're making out of high school, whether it's college, the military, trade school, or straight to the workforce, if you wake up in the morning happy from the decisions you made, then it is the right decision. I know people in their 40s and 50s who are still trying to figure this out. Wake up happy and be excited to head to work. If I could live my life over again after high school, I would like you to know I would make the exact same decisions over again. Minus the mysterious and unnecessary weight gain during my mid-20s. <laughs> I'm sure that had nothing to do with double stuff Oreos. Which now I guess there's mega stuff Oreos and that sucks. As I was saying, I would make those decisions over again because that was and is my path and I have loved each journey in my life. In the same regard, as much as I disapproved of my sister's initial decisions, I have learned that happiness trumps expectations, and that saying I told you about earlier still holds true. Let your heart guide your decisions, and not your decisions guide your heart. As I was writing this, I won't lie, I was tempted to just give you a third point that was a general, sugar-coated, chicken soup for the soul type of story. However, when you guys asked me to be your class speaker, I knew there was something specific I wanted to share with you. Two years ago, I was asked to be a class speaker, but I knew I wasn't ready to open up about it. Something, something I promised myself I would talk about. Give me a sec. Something I promised myself I would talk about when I read out in front of a large group of people because I believe it was so profound. 
and had such a powerful impact on my life. I'm going to tell you about two men. <clears throat> oh, when I was rehearsing this, this didn't happen. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about two men in my life that have, have been that have been monumental influences in molding and shaping me to the man I have become today. Five years ago, I was by myself in room 13 during my prep period, and I got a phone call. that nobody wants to get. I was told my stepfather had been... Uh, I'm really sorry guys. Had been light flighted to HSU from a construction accident. I will spare you the details and just say that that day was his last and it had everlasting effects on my life. Hmm. And if you're sitting here today saying, geez, Mr. Cochran, today's graduation is supposed to be a happy day, I want to reassure you it is. You see, after the healing, and after I had some time to meditate on what occurred, I learned so many things that would be a shame if I didn't eventually share them. What I didn't truly understand was that Kevin, my stepdad, was in the business of changing lives. When I got up, to speak at his funeral, I turned and looked at the audience and my breath was taken away. In a church that seats around a thousand people, I saw no more open seats. People were standing in the aisles and lining the wall. Relationships came easy to Kevin, and one thing was for sure it wasn't because of his money. This was a man whose childhood gave a new meaning to poor. In rural Nebraska, he grew up with five other brothers, and three of them had to share one bed. Hot water was not available to the majority of the time, as a shower was literally a hose out back. Yet probably my favorite Kevin story is one day when his mother, frustrated with raising six children by herself, and remember five of them and her boys, saw how messy the house was and yelled to the boys, pick up the house. So naturally after hearing that, the boys ran outside. Each one grabbed the corner of the house and physically tried to pick up the house. <laughs> He said he got a pretty good punishment for that one. <laughs> Kevin taught me that life is about perspective. I could illustrate this to you by telling you that one of my favorite by telling you one of my favorite quotes from Abraham Lincoln who said, We can complain because rose bushes have thorns, or we could rejoice because thorn bushes have roses. Even more fitting would be a quote a student and I were sharing together two years ago in the States. It's not length of life, but death of life. Essentially, I learned that life is too short. I need to have the most positive impact on the most pe people possible with the time that I'm given. The second man I'd like to talk to you about is my father, Steve. Just three months after Kevin passed away, I got another phone call that my father had leukemia. Based on his age, the doctor said he had about a 30% chance to make it through chemotherapy. Immediately, I saw my father's whole paradigm on life change as he quickly began living for each and every moment he was given. By the grace of God, he was spared. However, not too long after he was in remission, a rare blood disease called myelodysplasia came along, and now faced with greater odds in needing a stem cell transplant, we said our second, see you later, to our father. How this happened, I don't know. But while some people are on waiting lists for years to find a match, my father received his from a donor in Germany in a few months. The transplant occurred. He now has a new blood type and a new life. Aside from all the great things I can tell you about how my father's perspective on life has changed, I will end with this. As I was talking to him last weekend as he was holding his new grandson, he told me he's saving up for a new vacation. While some may save for Hawaii or some extensive cruise, after cheating death twice, he told me he's saving for a plane ticket to Germany. He said, <coughs> said, I just want to <coughs> meet him or her and shake their hand for saving my life. Okay, I think I'm good now. Uh, so graduates, I would like to challenge you with a few things. Both men were or are about changing lives, and I would like to ask you, are you in the business of changing lives? 
Have you shook the hands lately of those that have helped you get where you are and said thank you? Who are you being Kevin to in your life and who are you being Steve to? They say that relationships are the currency of heaven. I'll say that one more time. Relationships are the currency of heaven. There is nothing more fulfilling in life than serving others. Thank you, seniors, for letting me share this story.